have moonshine. It was the 1920s. Prohibition was in effect throughout the country thanks to the temperance movement. Hidden bars, known as speakeasies, were a source of money for infamous Chicago gangsters. These gangs would require protection money to be paid to them for the bars to operate without being run out of business by the Mafia. Infamous gangsters, such as Al Capone, would simply walk into bars and demand the money. I'll check it out. What's the password? What do you have? I'll just take a beer. Nice place you got here. It'd be a shame if a uh, rival gang took this place down. You know, I could offer my services to protect your interests. For a small fee, of course. I got all the protection I need. Get out of my boat. Thanks for the beer. So, what's your favorite color, son? Blue? Are you sure it isn't red? Yeah, pretty sure. Then why does your shirt have red on it? I must wear some blue. So, you have any relatives from Russia? No. You have any friends from Russia? No. Do you know how to spell Russia? Yes. Communist. Son, I have direct orders from the Department of Justice to weed out any communist threats. Where are the rest of you hiding? I don't know who you're talking about. The Bolsheviks. I don't know. The Russian revolutionaries. Are you a communist? No! Yeah. Um... Turns out you're not a communist. We kind of had a bit of a typo. But, um, we'll give you a ride back to your house. Um, you won't get deported. Um, no hard feelings, though, right?
tired of eating cold, stale, nasty bread. Then try the new revolutionary toaster with quadruple toasting action. Soon every household will have one of these revolutionary products that will forever change the way that you eat bread. Much better. Not only can you toast white bread, but also try some whole wheat. English muffins. Whatever this bread is. Frozen waffles. Hot pockets. Crackers. And dog treats. Wow, you got a car? You must be pretty rich. No, everyone has one now, thanks to the efficient methods of the assembly line. Yeah, I just got from my got back from my job with the oil company. I can really see how these cars have revolutionized the way we work. Yeah, but it's too bad for those railroad companies. At least we got cars and airplanes now. Yeah, I gotta go. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Hey Jeff, you're early. Yeah, with the uh, new car, you get here ten times faster than before. Yeah, I think Henry Ford in the assembly line for that one. Yeah, it just sucks with all this uh, overcrowding in the cities and whatnot. Yeah, I actually heard a statistic that there's more people living in cities now than rural areas. Wow, oh, really? It's wild. Yep. I'm so excited. Yeah, it's the first movie where people actually talk. The movie starting. Time to go uh, listen to the radio. Yeah, good thing we have so many forms of entertainment. Come in. Have a seat. Harry Sinclair, Sinclair Oil. Albert Fall, Secretary of the Interior. What can I do for you, Mr. Sinclair? Well, um, I'm here looking for some land, some oil, specifically. Yeah, I can... we know about it. My assets are in order, oil fields are ready. Let's make a deal. So, Mr. Sinclair, what makes you think that you should get this opportunity rather than anyone else? I know, does this qualify me? I think we can reach an agreement. Mr. Smith? Yes, Mr. Fall? Tell the other companies the land is off the market. As you wish. So, did you hear about uh, the Teapot Dome scandal? Yeah, it really sucks for the Harding administration. You know, their uh, whole reputation's going down the tube. They're not going to have any uh, credibility. Yeah, move on for the history books. Tell you that. Yeah, they had those uh, armament reductions, which were pretty good, but they're always going to be remembered as that one corrupt, uh, corrupt administration. Sure is a shame. Black people, pretty good. You have to agree with you on that one. I have a lot more respect for them now. Mm. Come in. Mr. President, we have a breakthrough. You've asked me to devise a plan on how to relieve the economic stresses of our country. Here you go. Take a look.
Mr. Miller, you're saying that this trickle-down policy will change the economy. You see, you cut taxes for the wealthy, that expands businesses, that creates more jobs, and the wealth will trickle down from the upper classes down to the lower classes, therefore creating a more prosperous economy. All rise. Court is now in session. Please be seated. Will the prosecution please present their case? Your Honor, I am completely unprepared. I call myself to the stand. I am here to cite the Butler Act of 1925 in favor of the state of Tennessee. The Butler Act clearly states that there should be no teaching of evolution of any kind in the state of Tennessee. I object. Present your case. I believe that education and science need to be separated from religion. I believe that kids can go to church on Sundays, learn about Jesus, but come to school and learn other theories of evolution so that they can form their own opinions as to what they would choose to believe. We need to break away from fundamentalist values so that we can form our own opinions. Is that what America is about? Our own opinions? I rest my case. Your Honor, he still broke the law. I agree. $100 fine. Court adjourned. What a wonderful world.